and Maria is another 20th. Um, and essentially, God, it goes really fast. Um, so essentially, kind of, um, we um, kind of quite an informal group of friends who a lot of a lot of who studied architecture together, and um, we um, kind of reached this point where we, where we decided we wanted to undertake a project together to kind of like um, look outside that normally quite confined role of the architect and to try and approach the project more holistically. And um, so it started kind of, is this really 20 seconds? Is uh, it 10 seconds? Is there right? Seems quicker, doesn't it? Yeah, it's can I just like... We can uh, check it, yeah, it's slide by slide, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're wasting valuable seconds here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the question there? Yeah, the press go like... Yeah. 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 Um, so we started without a like, client, a brief budget or site, um, but we got really interested in this kind of multitude of empty petrol stations in London, because like, to look at one piece of disused automobile infrastructure could kind of suggest use for, for all the other replicas throughout the city. Um, so kind of, as a result of the recession and with kind of quite a friendly developer, like three months later, I kind of turned into this, which is a cinema, which lasted for, for four weeks, um, which was kind of like, I don't know how familiar people are with the project, it's kind of right on Clarkenall Road, it's kind of main arterial road through London, and um, so part of the, the ambition behind the project was to look at kind of these um, individual pieces of kind of cinematic iconography and remake them with whatever materials we had at hand. So here's an example of like the, the classic red velvet flip-up cinema seat which was remade with scaffolding boards and through a process of trial and error broken down into a kind of a manual for making so that um, that that kind of involvement in the enjoyment of construction could be shared with kind of as broad a group of possible as people and so you know people dropped it by for kind of a few hours or, or, or the whole kind of three weeks and there was kind of a yeah kind of a base level involvement which everyone could take part in. Um, and so next slide yeah this is it at night. Um, and um, so yeah, kind of. Um, can't really remember what I was going to say over this, but um, but I guess like one of the, the 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 kind of interesting dynamics in the project was that relationship between the, the that kind of very involved private experience of being inside the auditorium and this kind of public spectacle of it on the street, and so one of that. Um, Kind of separated only by the, kind of the very thin thickness of, of this kind of roofing underlay, which we remade as a curtain. Um, there's kind of these two parallel um, kind of worlds coexisting. And then at the end of the, the film, um, kind of when the end came up, the, um, the curtain would rise up and the kind of suspension of disbelief would end. And you're kind of back there, kind of out in the, in the middle of the road. And um, hopefully, you should see what it looks like in a second. And, um, and so, like, I don't know, yeah, that kind of, um, kind of reclaiming something which was built to, to service the automobile as something which can instead be a, 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 a public space. And um, so essentially, though, kind of being next to the main, main road, there were kind of a lot of unknowns. And in the end, kind of like the project was, a, was, a bit of, you know, was an experiment. There's kind of a lot of license to fail, kind of dealing with road noise. But the ambition was more that kind of through through doing something kind of direct action, it would be a way of like actively learning through doing, and um, it could be a prototype for other projects elsewhere. And so then that was kind of a theme that we carried on to our second project, um, <coughs> the College of Flyover, which um, initially we found site through um, through Muff Architecture Art, where I also work. Um, so we've been looking at the public realm strategy all across Hackney Wick and Fish Island, which is the kind of this amazing place just on the western flank of the Olympic Park, and it's kind of suddenly got kind of all eyes on Hackney Wick, where it's become this kind of very loaded territory. Um, and right in that, there's scope for site under the motorway, um, which kind of was scope for, for potentially future, future kind of um, program investment. And so the idea is kind of, that's an image of the site under construction on the left. And kind of ever since it was built in the 70s, it then really had a use. And so part of the ambition behind the project was to kind of rewrite history and uh, rather than being a kind of Muggling people, it can be a, 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 a functioning social space. And so part of that was kind of yeah, rewriting history and developing this narrative of, of a building kind of caught underneath the motorway. Um, and so looking at the kind of um, 
the kind of nature of the of the buildings in Hackney Way and develop this kind of simple construction kit method of going from drawing experience of doing the chairs with some of um, you know, kind of referencing the brick architecture of Hackney Wick with these kind of one-to-one -one timber bricks, which would all be threaded together kind of like a giant um, bead necklace. Again, kind of like trying to open up um, that construction process to as many people as possible. And in the end, we had about kind of 250 people on site. Um, and kind of it took about four weeks in total. Um, so this is the site kind of a week before we started, and then that's it, um, kind of functioning. Um, and so during the day, um, we had kind of like a cafe, rent boats to take out on the canal, and we had kind of a, a series of events programming in conjunction with the Barbican and the Creative Festival. And then kind of at night, the, the kind of, um, you know, we'd have a, a, a cinema and we'd fly over. And with which, yeah, was, um, this, the project came about with a collaboration with the Barbican and their animation exhibition. So that kind of like both informed the material design, but also obviously kind of the, the use of the space as a as a kind of cinema event space. And so yeah, kind of this is a view from the from the motorway where kind of um, I read some amazing statistic that kind of forty thousand people drive over it every day, and kind of yeah, and like just below there's this kind of like slightly bubble of it. It's kind of it's very kind of immersive environment. Um, and so kind of that kind of was most of the kind of the material choices kind of went very quickly from a, from very basic drawing sets kind of shared among a large group of people to, to kind of then be made real on site with whatever materials we could get our hands on the floor. The tracks so from a kind of a company that I was working with that was shutting down so we managed to get them to kind of to to, to donate all that stuff. And so I suppose that creation of its of that environment was was kind of in part done by you know kind of design material choices as illustrated on the left, um, but also kind of more importantly probably it was through the kind of active involvement in the kind of the use and the activation of the space and often the the kind of um, the kind of biggest impetus for people to come onto the site and see what's going on was that was that site of another person having a good time, um, and so this is an image of the site a year before we started, um, the site slightly, looks slightly comical. Um, and then kind of that image on the right, I suppose at that point, you know, would have seemed unimaginable that, that it would be a place where, um, you know, like families might take their kids. Um, and I suppose um, with the Cinerodium, it was kind of like that kind of, the being temporary allowed us kind of freedom to, to experiment and and like, you know, we didn't have to fill in a lot of forms, we could just kind of do it. Um, whereas, whereas in this instance, kind of, because of the kind of how loaded the territory was, with the kind of TFL overhead, British waterways, Hackney Park's on the land, the Olympic Park next door, we had to go through like, kind of so much administration and everything that ended up being kind of like the same level of work you would do to, to design a permanent building. Um, which is a bit of a frustration, but in a way it's like, the I think probably the most useful thing then um, of it of it kind of being temporary was that it was kind of like able to evidence something to 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 kind of fund, funding authorities and and a kind of resident local council which otherwise kind of would be totally like beyond conceivable um, that you, yeah somebody take like a three year old kid to like play with wooden bricks um, and so now um, kind of off the on the back of the success of the project. Um, we're working with, with Muff to, to deliver permanent kind of um, improvements to the space, including like provision of water and power and resurfacing and we're also scoping the kind of long term development of it and the like um, reclaiming space from Hackney Council and so it being managed by a community management trust and the materials we're um, working with Gainesville Primary School to build lots of little plants and play with their playground. Um, and that's it. decisions <laughs> 20 people or more if it's consensus based or hierarchy. Um, so I guess it like um, probably happens a lot through through um, big open meetings like this um, where often um, yeah kind of people have done kind of a degree of like homework and it will be brought to the to the group in a, in a way that I suppose acts a bit like a, a crit. 
Um, and so I think like, <coughs> it's been like in a way it's, it's, it's kind of like an amazing resource of like having a lot of like time and people, and that's been something that we've been able to utilise like through developing these like quite labour intensive construction processes that are, are able to work within kind of confined budgets. Um, but on the other hand, it's meant that kind of like there are, there are elements which are kind of like almost like too important and too big for the to be reached like for decisions to be made by consensus. And I suppose like a good example of that is the is the actual like elevation of the building, um, where it's like it ended up just being just kind of like going up as the bricks came on site, and like rather than like earlier ideas about you know kind of like being able to kind of like cleverly play with the the, you know the different kind of uh, like wood stocks and like their their weathering or whatever to, to maybe you know make it look really well on the outside and inside it's kind of this amazing bright interior whatever like all those kinds of things we just like it was just impractical to to like collectively draw an elevation um, so um, so it kind of like meant that smaller things like the furniture and things that people could take away were kind of much better resolved um, so it certainly had it has had its um, its shortcomings. But I think probably the biggest advantage of it is just being, um, it's like having that like level of scrutiny um, that like you know starting with an idea is able to be kind of quickly kind of passed around and refined. And, stuff. and do you think that's something that transfers well, uh, at least to say your education in part one, this this idea of the quit or the review? Um, I don't know. I mean, like we never did any like. Projects in groups as big as twenty. We never did one-to-one -one building things, so probably not. But but it was m more than anything a, a response to the reality of working in practice, where often um, you know like yeah, you're, especially working as part one, you can have quite quite a limited role, and um, just to kind of you know take matters into our own hands. I just want to say that I love both of the projects. <laughs> just congratulate you because they've been really inspiring. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I have a question. With the amount of bureaucracy in Red Tip, how did you actually tick all the health and safety boxes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish, like, you know, we've been doing, like, in order to get uh, kind of my last little um, thousand pound fee, um, we've, we've had to, like, do a project report yeah. and where we've had to, like, evidence that kind of all those steps that we went through. And it's kind of it is quite eye opening. Um, so also like you know we have to do like event management plans, back reports, like flood risk assessments, um, and all done like in-house. because um, like you know paying some ecology consultants 